Hi, I'm Jody Sebring. Hi, I'm Laura Wilson. My name is Bailey Smith. lucky to grow up with parents who were super supportive of whatever I wanted to do if it was sports or art or anything else and so they were always encouraging me and taking me as a kid to museums and my mom would take me down to Cranbrook to see the sculptures in the gardens and I remember when I was going into middle school my mom actually took me down to the College for Creative Studies in Detroit just to kind of see the campus and see how creative it was and all the cool kids and so I always had this really great impression of art growing up and how important it was. My father was a university professor and I kind of remember probably didn't have a whole lot of money and one thing my mother did buy was a gigantic roll of newspaper, blank newspaper from the newspaper and so my brother and I drew all the time and I loved to draw and um, I don't remember a lot about my high school art or um, my elementary middle school art but I know that I still have a lot of my art projects that I did probably in the classroom in elementary art. Every holiday, every birthday, every time I could get something, it was always the wish list consisted of crayons and coloring books. It was always to make something and to draw or color. Um, my favorite days were the sun comes in onto the carpet and we sat on the floor, my sister and I, and just colored for hours. And I remember in high school, I think my senior year consists of about, I think there were six classes. And four of them were art, and two were a vocational art class. So my entire senior year, that last quarter was all art. It was heaven. I think my art teacher at high school, she was the biggest inspiration for me and I think that could be true for many students that go into the art field and she just encouraged me and I never felt I was a really great reader or that I was getting very far with some of my other studies but with art there was just some freedom there and encouragement from her that led me into the field and she's still a very close friend of mine the bond still is there and it was through her teaching that I earned a huge scholarship. I remember being in school and not being one of the great artists. You know, every classroom, you're like, there's a student that, well, they can really draw. And I don't remember being that person. And um, I had a couple of friends that drew really well, and I would learn from them. But it wasn't until I was in college at Michigan State, and we did a lot of rendering, and I discovered watercolor and how much I enjoyed that. And um, I got you know, some recognition for watercolor. You're like, wow, okay, that's easy. And then when I went to um, U of M, I had to pick a concentration. And I hadn't had a lot of clay experience. And when I started working with clay, it just clicked. And that's just been a passion of mine. So when I went to uh, U of M, the concentration there was um, in clay. And I brought that to the classroom. I had a teacher, Claudia Kegelwitz, who still teaches here, and she is just a wonderful woman who actually happens to be my neighbor as well and so when school wasn't in session she used to have me over to do painting with her or to hang out in her studio which I just thought was the coolest thing in the entire world I look up to her so much and um, when I got old enough I found out that she taught a summer art camp for middle school and for high school students and she asked me to assist her one year with that which was just um, the perfect thing for me. I think in the beginning I don't know how helpful I was. I was practically more of a student than an assistant but I continued it throughout the years and I think this year we did it together for the tenth time. She's been a great mentor for me and why I ultimately went into teaching. When I got into high school I also had a couple of great art teachers who I just looked up to so much and I realized that I wouldn't have gone to college or continued art as a career or even seen art as a career if it hadn't been for them. And so 
they were also incredibly instrumental in me going and teaching. They just, they helped me as a person um, realize what I could do and I just knew how important that was and I thought if I could do that for other kids it would be a really an amazing thing to do with my life. I went to school in Savannah, Georgia to the Savannah College of Art and Design with a $10,000 scholarship and that was big and I was nervous, but I was so excited. To go to an all art college was a dream. So there was more painting and fine arts and photography, ooh, but I loved photography too. And there was jewelry, and I loved jewelry. Those were some favorite classes of mine, but it was the graphic arts, the advertising that just I, I fell in love with. And after graduating from college, I started going back to my old high school to see if they needed substitute teachers because my first thought was I want to go into teaching just like my art teacher. And they said at that time you would need to go back into the teaching program. And so four years of school I just finished at the same time talking about and thinking about going into education program I was also interviewing for that graphic art job and I landed an incredible position and started working in advertising and it was 14 years later I was still in advertising. While I was in advertising working as an art director um, my husband and I started a family and I just felt there was I wanted to do something more I wanted to give back more I wanted to be more and I looked into getting my teaching certification and I just I went for it I started looking for job postings and there was a position at the junior high school and I remember I was in Alabama on vacation and I get a call and I drove 14 hours with the kids all the way home to make it to an interview and I got the job so it was amazing I worked next to Claudia and Claudia Kaglovitz at the um, junior high and that was 8th and ninth grade and that's where I started I wanted to be an architect, but I wasn't all that great with math. And so I ended up going into design. And so I graduated from Michigan State with a degree in design. And then as my own children were in school, I worked for um, a program called, it was like the Picture Lady program, where we would talk about an artist. We'd go into classrooms and maybe be Van Gogh, and I would talk to the kids all about Van Gogh. And I really enjoyed it. We'd do a project, and it, it was great. And I thought, wow, if I could go back to school and get certified. So then I went to University of Michigan and got my art certification and then uh, uh, came to Clarkson. I'm kind of a latecomer to um, art education. You know, I started, I would think I was uh, 40 when I started. So then I have, you know, my coworkers and my peers who start, you know, in their 20s and 30s and all in different stages. What's nice is that brings a nice melding of abilities and talents that we can all kind of share and, and learn from each other. And different philosophies sometimes too. The School of the Art Institute of Chicago and they what they did was they offered either two week or three week courses that would give you college credit um, but they were geared for high school students who were starting to feel interested in it and possibly attending an art college and it was the most life-changing experience for me because I don't know that I would have felt comfortable going to specifically an art college before it really opened my eyes to find out that it was filled with people just like me and it was filled with so much creativity and fun and I just, I felt like I found everything I needed there. I went on to college, I applied for the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. CCS was so amazing to me because it was just this whole school for art. Around my second year they kind of asked that you take courses in just about all the mediums, so painting, drawing, printmaking, sculpture everything that's related to fine arts and I got into a printmaking class in my second year there and I just fell in love. I mean literally fell in love. Well I think all of us run our classrooms a little bit di differently but um, for the most part um, I'd say third grade down they come into the art room they start on the carpet we talk about what we're gonna do maybe review something that we did last week and that we're going to take it to this week. 
Um, on average, instruction's about five minutes, maybe four. If it's introducing a new project, it might be seven minutes. Um, the students, really this is all about materials management. My students have um, toolboxes over here and they're numbered. So their number in their classroom corresponds to the number of their toolbox. And in there they're gonna find two pencils, an eraser, and scissors, so they should have their materials. Um, they have assigned seats except for kindergarten. And then my tables, underneath these tables, they're coded with the number one through four. So cleanup time, they're gonna look up on the robots to find out, hey, if I'm number three, my job is to collect the work at the table and organize it and bring it. And that, that little organization will save a lot of time in the long run. So their actual work time, minus the claim, is usually about 17 minutes. And then, and, and usually what happens is I'll say, I try to give them warnings, you know, two minutes to clean up and you, oh, they're so like, what, we just got here. We have 30 minutes with the students and we get a lot done in 30 minutes. But when you add up the 30 minutes over the year, it works out to be 18 hours. That's all I will see of my students in one year. And um, it, it's not enough because June will come and I will be sad again that I didn't get to everything I wanted them to experience. Etching and lithographs are a very serious and intense medium. And as much as I loved them, they, when I got out of school, I felt like I was working and I really just kind of wanted something more fun and playful for when I'm, I had my time off. And so I started a small letterpress studio in my parents' garage who are so, again, <laughs> thank God to them because I, I needed the space and they were more than happy to provide that for me. So I, Letterpress is another form of printmaking. It's the same kind of idea. You can make as many as you want, but letterpress is how newspapers and broadsides and posters were always printed before we went to offset printing. And so every single letter is set for, pulled from a box and set into the press and every single thing is spaced out and um, has to be locked into the press. And it's a very laborious, time-consuming time, type of art, but I love it. It's, it's just as catering to my perfectionist personality as etching and lithographs. So, and it's been a lot more, it's got a lot more play to it. I feel like I've really enjoyed getting into it. And I studied it a little bit in college, but not nearly as much as I did the other mediums. And this has been a lot of fun for me. Before I knew it, one press became four and one box of type became 50. And now I have a pretty decent sized little studio for myself. I feel like right now my focus is definitely being the best elementary teacher I can be. That that is something that is a very high priority. And right up there is my family, which right now as a mom with two young students at home going to school they're kind of my ex they're like I'll have them come over and they'll work on a project with me and it's a great way to gauge lessons and see reflections of how that's turning out with them at home so in a sense the family right now helps me with preparing lessons for the classroom as well because I have a third grader at home and a fifth grader at home and I do teach to third and fifth grade as well um, outside of that, I have been very interested in continuing lots of other classes. I just finished um, requirements from the state of Michigan to move from provisional to professional. And other interests that I would have is my continuous love for photography. I still do graphic design at home and work on business cards and small jobs that come in like that. And also, um, I've got some mural ideas in my home I'm dying to try, but I haven't got to those yet. And the last thing that's been a very interesting in has been henna art, or the art of Mendy. And I had a henna artist come in, five of them come in last year for my fifth graders. And all the students received um, the art of Mendy on their hand, which is a henna technique, using henna paste from the henna plant. 
And so there's also been some classes for that I like to get into, as well as keeping with graphic design, a few Zentangle classes that I'd be interested in, which is a really intense pattern making. That, you know, artists, Sony, because you're always, always growing, you know, you never reach the top. You're always kind of pursuing, and usually what happens is you kind of start going a different direction. Now I started in watercolor, now I'm working with acrylics. I think there's kids are really excited. They're always excited about art, but they really get excited when you bring clay. And that's probably one of the reasons why in the summertime I work with, uh, I think this is the seventh year that I've worked with, um, I believe it's second grade through fifth grade. We do two weeks of clay camp, two separate weeks. And this past year, I um, opened it up to uh, sixth through ninth graders, mainly because my students have all, they're all, I believe, juniors and seniors at the high school now. So um, I, they were asking me, hey, are you going to have a camp? And I thought, you know, I think it's time. And I, it was a great experience. I loved working with that age group. Summer, or summer before last, I was getting my master's degree at Boston University. And one of the reasons why I chose Boston is, uh, one, it could do it online. Um, which was much tougher than I could ever imagined. And there was a two week come to Boston and do art with artists for two weeks. And that really sold me on that. So, um, you know, traveling to Boston and I am mean, with 50 other art educators who some of them, like me, don't have a lot of time for art and others make a lot of time for their art and it's part of their profession. They, you know, sell their art however on and there was a lot of talent there and it brought me back to when i wasn't the best artist in the class and uh but a little different perspective this time because i know it's all about experience and practice and so um i had a painting class and i took a printmaking class and i tried to choose areas that i hadn't had a lot of experience in and uh, i just really enjoyed it and that's things that now what i find myself doing is still clay um, but doing a little more painting Well, I think art education is really important for a couple of reasons. I think, um, um, as I was talking about, that it's kind of like the great equalizer. Students that really excel in writing or math and maybe um, students that struggle in those areas, they all come to the art room. And sometimes a student that struggles is the one that excels in the art room. And the one that excels in the classroom, uh, if they you know, reading and writing, will come in here and struggle. So it's kind of nice. Um, I, I can tell you lots of stories about a student that um, this is highlight of their day. I should say highlight of their week. Their, this 30 minutes is something that they, um, they look forward to. And um, this is where they shine. And that's why it's so important. Um, also, just in general, art education, I think, is important because it, it teaches students some of the things I think we're missing a lot, like perseverance, um, how to keep working on something, um, that there is more than one answer to a question. How can you go about it? Looking at things different, turning it around, looking at it different ways. Um, I think it teaches students patience. And um, I just think it's one of the most important subjects. I've got parents that come to me asking, what else is there for my child? We need more art. My child's very interested in art. And there's multiple parents coming to me asking for this. There's a need for more art in this community. and. I see the students that flourish in here, and I'll hear from students that say the art is my favorite. And I, I relate to that. That was me. That was art. That was everything to me because I could express myself, and there was no right or wrong in art. It was just me and my art, and I tell them that too when they come in. This is you and your art time. And their decisions making, their higher level of thinking, where will this go? Where will I position something? What color will I choose? And what feelings and emotions did I just create when I finished this piece? I think that there are plenty of kids I see in a day who may struggle through math or struggle through spelling and the rest of school is really a rough day for them. Maybe it's not always pleasant and you know where some kids they excel in everything or they really have a lot of accomplishments and so it's easier for them. But those kids who don't feel like they're doing well in other subjects, I'm always telling them there's no wrong answer in art. You know, I, I put out kind of guidelines and things that I want them to learn, certainly, but there's no wrong answer. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, even in the art world, there's no saying why you should like something or why you shouldn't. And so I think them 
feeling that comfort that they can't do anything wrong, that they have more freedom and that they're not being judged for or tested on what they're making ultimately. I think they feel really comfortable with that. The students are expressing themselves more and more visually. They want to be visually thinking and expressing that. And so I think the need for drawing more and learning how to create an image to express that thought or idea is becoming more important now, more than ever. And all of this helps us express ourselves and think about critical thinking of where we're gonna place that and how I want this to turn out. And I just find that I almost need to go into the classrooms and help the students express themselves visually with art. A few years ago, we worked in a program called Talk, Draw, Write. And the philosophy behind that was that kids come to school and they, they don't know how to write and they don't know how to read, but they all know how to draw pictures. And, how, and that's kind of one of the things that we talk about here. What we do in here is visual literacy. It's, it's reading without words and, you know, and telling a story without, without words and our feelings without words. So in this age of you know, pushing on the literacy, we have a different approach here. You know? It's something that, uh, and even in our cultures of thinking, that's really uh, a huge part of our district right now. That started in the visual arts and looking and observing, you know, just like a scientist would look and observe. So this really, art really melds to every subject in the district. Because they need to feel accomplishments. They need to feel good about themselves. And this might be one of the few rooms in the school they really do. So I think having art in an everyday experience, or at least creativity in an everyday experience for a younger kid is so crucial. The, for the past two years over at North Sashaba, I worked with a group of third graders, uh, students that were struggling um, on their MEEP tests in the areas of math, really struggling. And the idea was to take a small group of students. I think that we first class we had was 15 students. And they'd come in and we would do some of the um, cultures of thinking, some visual strategies, you know, visual thinking strategies we call, where I put up a piece of art and selecting things that had a lot of geometric patterns and ge geometric characteristics. And we would just talk about it. What do you see here? And um, it was really profound, the things that they would come up with that they saw in pictures. And, and, and really, now, why do you see that? Um, Give me your evidence of what, why you're seeing that in this picture. And then after that, we would do a project or some sort of um, creative process where they were working in geometrics. So for example, we took blocks and they lined them up and then they drew them. Then we um, had some just pieces of lumber and we took these and we created a city. And the idea behind that is if a student is struggling on a, a test question that might be asking them about three-dimensional shape, they might have had some muscle memory. They've held that block in their hand, made it a rectangular prism. They've held that in their hand, and the test might be, you know, what happens when the block is upright and then it's on the side, and they'll, they'll remember. I remember that. I remember now when that block, when I turned it over. And it was great at the end of the year, we had some significant increase in their test scores in the areas of math, so it's exciting. When the sunflowers were alive, we sat out here, and I have, I have these great pictures of the kids sitting in front of the windows drawing the sunflowers. It's so cute. So it was kind of a fun first day project at the beginning of this year, fifth and second grade made circles and painted them whatever color they wanted and I turned them into this display. We learned about the Heidelberg project and one of the houses there is covered in polka dots and so is the street actually. Even the pavements painted with polka dots. So we learned about the artist who made them, um, who started the whole project and they got to make their own polka dot which is now decorating the case and all the way into the hallway and down the hallway as well.
this is a third grade lesson uh, where we talked about Picasso and how um, drawing realistic and then uh, drawing kind of an expressionist um, perspective. And so the idea behind this is that they can practice, they can do these eyes and nose and mouth and they can do them on separate pieces of paper. If you make a mistake, great, you know, try again. Creativity in an everyday experience for a younger kid is so crucial. What we do in here is visual literacy. It's, it's reading without words and, you know, and telling a story without, without words and our feelings without words. In a higher level of thinking, where will this go? Where will I position something? What color will I choose? And what feelings and emotions did I just create when I finished this piece?